in Santa Catalina Island, about 26 miles off the mainland of California. And we spend about three weeks or so here a year. And before we started using solar, we would have to start the engine in the morning and in the evening to charge the batteries. And our biggest battery draw is the refrigerator freezer, and it draws about five amps. So the other electrical we have doesn't draw that much. We have an electric flush macerator toilet, and we have LED lights, and then we have a wash down that is the water pump and the sinks and the galley and the bathroom. But definitely the main battery draw is the refrigerator freezer. Now, of course, we could do without a refrigerator freezer and we could just use a cooler, but everybody has their creature comforts that they make sacrifices for and that's definitely ours. We like having a refrigerator and freezer. So over the years, we've tried to figure out a way to avoid having to run the engine in the morning and the evening. And I first started maybe about 15, 20 years ago with some solar panels. They were long, narrow panels, about five feet long, about just a foot wide. They were not very effective and the solar panels have definitely gotten better over the years. The next thing I tried was one 100 watt solar panel and I mounted that on the rail, as you can see in this picture. And that helped, but the batteries would still eventually draw down because I wasn't bringing in enough energy to replace what I was losing with the refrigerator and freezer. Next, I went to an, an additional 100 watt solar panel and I put that on the bow. So now I had 200 watts. That helped a lot, still wasn't enough. So eventually I went to two 175 Renogy solar panels. The only problem with those solar panels is they were too big to mount on the rail. I never could find anything that uh, I could use to mount those flexible solar panels. Certainly not the way that I had the 100 watt panel mounted on the rail. And I had the 175 up on the bow, took up a lot of space up there. So I decided I need to do something different. We've always put a shade on the boat and this shade is not like a bimini so it's not kind of a semi-rigid structure. It's just held up there attached with lines to the mast and to the standing rigging. So it's not a perfect solution because it's not totally stable and if it gets windy it's going to blow around pretty good. But I put the two 175 panels up there I zip tied the corners to the grommets on the shade and then I zip tied the two panels together, ran the wiring from the two panels, they're run in parallel. So the two positives go together and the two negatives go together. And then a eight gauge wire on the positive and there's a branch connector that puts those two positives together that wire runs down the shade, down the standing rigging to the battery compartment. And the same thing for the negative on the two solar panels. So those two negatives run together on a branch connector. Then that eight gauge negative wire runs down the rigging to the battery compartment where I have a 30 watt controller. And this 30 watt controller is designed for two batteries, so there's battery one, battery two, and the solar panel negative and positive go down and connect to the controller, and then at the controller, there's a positive and negative for each battery, battery one and battery two. So you're able to charge two batteries with this controller. And the system that we have now, you know, it's not perfect, and I call it kind of Mickey Mouse or Hillbilly in that, uh, it would be a much better setup if it was on a Dodger or Bimini. But it does work. So we've been here for eight days and we're running our refrigerator freezer. We're using our lights, our water pump for the, sh the wash down and for the sinks and then the electric toilet. And it has totally kept up. So we have not run the engine at all in the eight days that we've been here. We're gonna be here total almost two weeks 
and I'm pretty confident that we're not going to have to use the engine at all. So I'm a big advocate of these solar panels. We come out here and we're in Avalon Bay and you see people running their engines all the time. Now running these two solar panels in parallel only increases the watts and the amps. It doesn't increase the volts. So if you wanted to increase the volts, you would have to run them in series. And I guess some of these people out here are probably watching big screen TVs and using microwaves and blow dryers or whatever, and they have an inverter. We, we're not doing that. We're just trying to get enough amps to the batteries that it'll keep up with our usage, particularly on the refrigerator and freezer. But a lot of the people out here could definitely take advantage of solar panels. They're running their engines and their generators, and they don't have big draws like TV sets. They're running their engine just to keep their batteries up so they can use their lights and their radio and a refrigerator or whatever. So it's surprising to me that more people don't take advantage of solar power. I think it's, you know, I'm not an expert on solar power. I tried to follow what Renogy recommends, and Renogy manufactured the two panels, and they recommend that you have an inline fuse from the positive cable that runs to your controller. So I have one 30 amp fuse in that inline fuse. So there's a branch connector that connects the two positives on the two solar panels, and then the Renogy fuse holder in line on the eight gauge wire that runs to the controller and then they recommend from the controller the two positives that go to the two batteries that there also be an inline fuse there so i have two inline 30 amp fuses on the positive cable running from the controller to the positive terminal on each battery so I just try to do all the safety things that they recommend. Uh, there's a lot of it that I don't really understand. There's a lot to this controller that I don't really understand, but I did set up the safety stuff that they recommend. I have a sealed battery. I have two Optima Marine batteries that are dual purpose. They're house and starter batteries. So they can be drawn down and up, down and up, and it shouldn't uh, affect their life. The Optima batteries that I had before this lasted 10 years, and after 10 years they weren't dead. I just noticed that their performance started to drop off, so I replaced them. So I've been really happy with the Optima batteries, and particularly these dual-purpose marine batteries that are both house and starter. So I have those two batteries. I have the 30-amp controller. I have the two 175-watt Renogy solar panels and then the wiring to connect them. That's basically all I have. I did attach a remote uh, monitor just because I had to mount the controller down so low, it was difficult for me to see the screen on the controller. And of course, I could have run that remote all the way to the cabin, I, but I didn't really want to mess with the wiring for that. So I just mounted the remote up higher in the battery compartment so that I would be able to read it easier and um, you just have to make sure that you have it set for the type of batteries that you have and mine are sealed lead batteries and I've made that selection on the controller and then you can just watch the controller and see what the battery the two different battery levels are in my situation and how much energy you're bringing in on the solar panels it tells you how many amps are coming in and how many watts are coming in and what the volts are and again when you run it in parallel it doesn't matter how many you put in parallel the volts are going to stay constant those don't build but you do increase the number of watts and the number of amps that you have and if you're trying to increase the number of volts then you'd run those in series but i'm I'm not going to get into all that because I'm really not an expert on that, but I'm just, it's, you know, relatively easy to set up, and I think that it's a huge plus not having to run your uh, engine all the time. I don't like the smell of it when you're running it. You have to be here. You shouldn't leave your engine running when you're not on the boat, obviously. So it was just a big hassle, and so I'm a huge fan of solar. I don't know why more people don't use it. 
it's very efficient it's a very effective we definitely get enough sun out here and we had about four consecutive days that were really cloudy and not just thin layers of cloud but pretty dense clouds and it was still enough to keep the batteries charging so like i've said we've been here eight days nine days and we haven't had to run the engine and the batteries are still full so if you're thinking about setting something up and uh you don't really have the ideal setup like I don't have the ideal setup because I don't have a Bimini I don't have huge deck space don't have a Dodger to set this stuff up but we still made it work with what we've got and it's worked for us so I hope this helps you thanks for watching and we'll see you next time